So I've got another, so I've got a video today about the Emacs uh, Tiny Hawk. Uh, I made a video about this guy before. It's a really great quad, wait, wait a minute. Um, this isn't a Tiny Hawk. This, uh, this isn't a Tiny Hawk. This is a brushless tiny whoop, yeah! In all seriousness, this is gonna be another kind of micro comparison video. This is gonna be going head to head. This is going to be going head to head against this guy, the Emacs uh, Tiny Hawk. I find myself doing a lot of these kind of mic. Well, this is the, I guess, third video in, I guess, like a series I didn't really plan on doing, but I'm doing just because. I keep coming in contact with these little guys, so let's kind of compare them. Before we get too heavily into it, I do want to point out a couple of key differences between these two. I'm mostly going to be talking about this guy because, well, I've already talked about this guy quite a lot. So as of the time of this video, you can't actually buy a brushless Tiny Whoop from, you know, the company Tiny Whoop, because, like, as a kit, that's what I mean. So, like, as of right now, if you want one of these things, you have to kind of, you have to find, you have to put each of the individual pieces that make up this aircraft in your shopping cart, press order, and when all the pieces arrive at your home, you have to build them yourself. And I'm just going to turn this this way. So, uh, let me go over to you really quick the components that I am using for this guy. So, the frame is the, um, not, not the canopy, the frame is the Beta 65 Pro, that's the 1S uh, brushless 65mm uh, quad from uh, Beta FPV, that's just the frame. The motors, these are the Tiny Whoop, uh, I think they're called the Boost Juice. They are, night. they are the 1900 kV brushless motors that are made by Tiny Whoop. The flight controller underneath this canopy, this is the Crazy B F4 version one. And for the camera and VTX, I'm using the uh, Newbie Drone B-Brain Lite camera and the canopy to go with it. I just had it lying around. And for the VTX, I am using a TBS Unify Nano. So that's the build of the aircraft. Now let me actually show you the video of both of these going head to head.
So those were the cleanest laps that I could get with either of these aircraft. And uh, with this guy, actually, I wasn't using the uh, 300 milliamp hour pack. I was actually getting faster lap times on, on these. These Nitro Nectar 250 milliamp hour packs. These were actually a little bit faster and a little bit more consistent than this. So this is a uh, GN3 300 milliamp hour 1S LiPo. And as you can see, the 250 milliamp hour pack right here, this is just a little bit smaller and therefore a little bit lighter. And I could feel a difference between these two. On this, on this battery, the Tiny Whoop felt uh, more controlled, a little bit lighter, a little bit more uh, nimble in the air, and it felt like I had a little bit more power delivery because, again, this is just a little bit lighter than this is. So, um, so yeah, these can make it two minutes. Um, with these, you are going to get a little bit more flight time, but in terms of racing, going um, unless I can figure out a way to make this thing lighter, then I'll definitely be using these. Then again, of course, you could always up the KV of the motors. Tiny Whoop does sell a uh, 22,000 million, uh, sorry, 22,000 KV version of these motors, so you could use those if you so desire. So anyway, let's get into the results. Let's talk about both of these and let's kind of discuss which one came out on top. Obviously, as you saw, I was able to get in one more lap with this compared to this. And just between the two, here's kind of what I, okay. So I think in a, in a straight line, this is gonna be just a little bit faster and, I, and that's gonna be down to just the size of the props. As you can see, um, the props on the Tiny Whoop are just a little bit larger than the props on this guy. Now, like I said, you can put higher KV motors on this thing, you can go faster, so I think straight line speed is kind of a wash. However, in race, in drone race, especially with these little guys, you're not, there's not a whole lot of opportunity to take advantage of straight line speed. It's more about navigating a really tight technical course. And between these two, I had a much, much easier time navigating the course with this guy as opposed to this. Both of these are running a Project uh, Mockingbird Tune. This is running the Project Mockingbird Tune uh, V3, just the standard version. And this is running the Project Mockingbird V3 Tune specifically for the Emacs Tiny Hawk. Um, and also, also just the, the actual physical design of the aircraft actually comes down to hand, comes down, I think, to its handling. As you can clearly see, the brushless Tiny Whoop is quite a bit smaller than the Tiny Hawk. So what that means is, is as you're going through gates or just narrow objects, this, you're going to have a much easier time, um, navigating through those, um, you know, gates or just or obstacles with this just because it is a smaller footprint in the air. So between these two, the Emacs Tiny Hawk, this is still a great product. This just does everything a little bit better than this does. Now, what are the drawbacks to this aircraft? Well, number one, this is more expensive. I'll leave a price down here in the in either in one of the corners of the screen that um, shows the price of this little guy, you know, with all of the components, and also um, in terms of building it, this was actually kind of a difficult build trying to figure out how to route all the wires um, in a clean sort of way without them kind of sticking out all over the place. So if you are new to the hobby, I don't recommend this as your first build. Um, the solder joints are very small, and if you're not very good at soldering, you could very easily, you know, maybe damage something that you didn't mean to damage, and you could end up frying something very easily. If you are an experienced builder and you are looking for a 
uh, 1S brushless indoor uh, drone, I think this is a great fit. So um, I kind of want this to be a quick video, so let's wrap this up. So in conclusion, um, if you are in the market for a uh, for a brushless 1S tiny whoopish style aircraft, and you just it may be like you don't have a lot of so maybe you don't know how to solder or you just kind of want something that's just bite and fly. I still think this is a great, great option. The Emacs Tiny Hawk is still a fantastic um, aircraft. There's a lot of support out for this thing. There's a lot of reviews on it. There's um, a lot of information out there about this aircraft that can help you get up into the air. If you um, would like to build your own aircraft and or especially um, if you want to be um, competitive in the uh, in the tiny whoop uh, racer category, I think this is this is a solid choice. They're both good for a respect for a a certain audience or for a certain buyer. However, I still think that um, if we're just talking about sheer just raw performance. I think this, the brushless Tiny Whoop, just slightly edges out the Emacs Tiny Hawk. Um, if Jesse Perkins over at Tiny Whoop decides to release this in a bind and fly, you know, package, um, yeah, that'll give this Tiny Hawk a serious run for its money. So, um, Jesse, Jesse Perkins, if you're watching this, just, why hasn't this been made a kit yet? It's, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And plus, just come on. Look at it. It's cute. Look at how cute this thing is. I mean, come on. Have you never seen a, a more adorable piece of technology in your life? Come on. I mean, I'm not usually one to say that something is cute, but just come on. Look at it. <laughs> Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!